Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC, we do urban DIY and today we have another service call for another LG HVAC system. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we work on the LG Multi-V system. Unfortunately guys, it's the same old news. Bad compressor. The worst part about it is, is that this compressor was just changed about six, seven months ago. Prior to us changing this compressor about seven months ago, there was another company who came here and changed the compressor just three weeks prior to us. So they changed it, three weeks later it failed. Next thing you know, we come in, but now we only got seven months of life here. Now on top of that, the inverter board is completely, it's just melted. One of the legs just melted off on that board. The inverter board went bad. The power board went bad. The fan board went bad. It's just truly unbelievable. Anyways, guys, so we're gonna be here changing this compressor. As far as this video, I'm gonna give you guys a little insight on what I found in the building as to what I think could possibly be happening. We found that all the indoor units are so dirty that we're not moving air and i know that we had a super super low pressure on this i know there's no exact pressure that's like normal or whatever just because it's an inverter but some things are just way too low so all these systems they're running on such strange pressures i told them like we gotta fix this we never we never did it you know they want to save money but just doing these little quick fixes it's not gonna help. What you wanna do is find out why. And that's what makes you a good technician. You found a bad compressor, sure, you change it. But look, six months later, it's gone again. What makes you good is answering why. Why did it go bad? Well, it needs to be investigated. So, I think that we're having a very low pressure because think about it. If we're not moving air across the coil because all the, bla the blades are super packed, and I'm gonna leave some pictures of what we found. There's no way you're moving air across that coil. So I'm gonna leave it in right now. Next, what's going on? Why do we have such a low pressure? Because we're not moving air. And what happens when we're not moving air? We have liquid migration coming back to the compressor. And the compressor is a vapor pump. It cannot pump liquid. So what happens? It fails. So that's what I think is happening here. It could be a mix of that. That's definitely a huge contribution to it. Also, might not have good oil coming back. They got all these, they added suction line filter dryers. And there's just no way, you know, what happened is, I'm gonna show you another picture. I opened some of these, there's no more filters inside them. They should have removed the casings. What's happening, I saw oil being trapped in these casings, and I made a proposal for all of these to be removed from the roof. They haven't gone through with it. I told them they need to clean the entire building. All the units need to be cleaned. There was never proper access, so they've never been cleaned for 12 years. What do you think is gonna happen? And they were wondering, pointing fingers and blaming everybody, but you know what? You gotta accept responsibility sometimes as a man, as a decent human being, as a business, that, you know, you guys weren't doing the right practices and this is what happens. Huge bills, huge bills. These compressors cost thousands of dollars. Do this repairs, thousands of dollars. Hey, I ain't complaining. You know what I'm saying? I'm the only person benefiting from this, nobody else. But anyways, even then, this is such a hard job to do. Just to bring these compressors here. Come on, look, we gotta go through all of this. Just to get into the, we gotta walk up two flights. Just to get to the building, we go down another flight of stairs. It's just ridiculous amount of stairs, guys. So, this video, just to give a little insight. Also, we're gonna be doing the two second acid test. We're gonna check the refrigerant. And when we, we're gonna pull this compressor out and we're also gonna do a, an oil acid test. I've never done this. I have done this before. Let's get started. To recover this refrigerant, you have to put in coats. This thing, this whole unit is just insane. Anyways, so 
With this test, this is the quick check, two second acid test by Quick Products by Mainstream Engineering. The model number is QT2000. It's a color change, indicates it's either pass or fail. You see this like yellow. If it changes color, you know it's bad. It says it works with all refrigerants and oils, meets EPA venting regulations. You can test for inorganic acids. And yeah, it's super simple. Pretty much you want the compressor running for you to check this, but before we start, you know, pulling vacuums and putting in fresh batch of refrigerant, we want to know that the system's not contaminated. Although we need, we're going to have to run this test again when the compressor is running. It's better we try something first in case we need to flush this thing out. I mean, even look at this piping. What is that, man? Whose man's is this? <laughs> Anyways, so the way this is, is that this is compressor is running and you literally just push this on the Schrader valve, little refrigerant vents goes through this. If it changes color, you're done. And that's it. So I want to do a quick test, even when the compressor is not running. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but I want to try. Let's open these up. I always recover from the two largest pipes, right? Let's open this up. And pretty much we're going to just press this against the Schrader valve. And that's really all you do. So you can do it from each side. Let's see, insert either end of the quick check over the low side service valve, okay? This is the suction line, low side is your suction side. But it says, while the system is operating, allow the vapor to flow across the indicator paper for two seconds. It says, if the indicator paper does not change color, pretty much you're good. If it changes slightly, you're gonna need to treat this. There's gonna be a complete, uh, there's gonna be another process for that. And we're gonna have to remove the acid and they have a special treatment for that. All right. One, two. I know the system has to be running, but you know what? I really don't see a color change. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. Looks like we're okay in that sense. But that's how you use this. You want the system running, you wanna do this from the low side, and you check. If it changes, turns like pink, I believe, then the thing is no good. But as of right now, we're okay. Let's start by turning the power on and programming this into evacuation mode some kind of va oh we're gonna put it in vacuum mode excuse me vacuum mode all right so we got our recovery setup going on this new recovery machine this thing is absolutely great we got a recovery cylinder we have our refrigerant scale so you can see how much we're recovering manifold setup we did have to put we have did have to code this in as you can see vacc we're in vacuum mode I made a separate video on how to put that system in there. Also, if you watch any of my compressor replacement videos, you're gonna see I have that included in those as well. But I wanted something separate so you guys can just save it and just have something quick like, hey, how do I put a multi V4 or multi V5 system in vacuum mode? You wanna do this so you don't have any trapped refrigerant. So when you uh, are recovering or pulling a vacuum, that doesn't happen and also you just do the proper technique so you are safe and the system is safe what we do is when we put it in vacuum mode all the eevs and solenoid valves vo excuse me solenoid valves open so of course nothing gets trapped and the whole system is open and then you go along your regular recovery technique so got in vacuum mode we're recovering unfortunately it's starting to rain we're gonna get an umbrella in here we're gonna do as much as we can Hopefully it doesn't start pouring on us because if, if so, we're gonna have to continue tomorrow. So let's pull this recovery. We're getting gonna get the umbrella. It's the Subco awesome uh, magnetic umbrella. We're gonna set this up and it's gonna cover us from light rain and also from the sun on a sunny day. But today, clearly, it ain't sunny. 
All right, guys, we're getting close. This umbrella is awesome. All right, so we finished with the recovery. To get to this compressor and change it, it's honestly ridiculous. We gotta take down the whole control panel. So let's get a few things out of the way. Some screws. And let's take this thing down. What's going on? Oh, that cover is in the way. All right. Okay. Lift it up. Okay. This is in the way a little. All right, let's bring it down. Hold on, get the crates. Gotcha. All right, let's lay it down. Okay. Oh man, this thing is crazy. All right. All right, we got a lot of wires here and everything. Let's, uh, let's get this stuff out of the way. Gotta take this thermistor off. It's not a regular compressor. Instead of two connections, we got five. All right, so upon taking out this thermistor here, you guys can see there's like a hole in here. This thing is in really bad shape. It's gonna have to be replaced. Just by the looks of it, I can tell you this thing's gonna have a bad reading. And the issue is I changed one of these for a different system. It's not just one thermistor. This is connected to a series of thermistors. So like I think this suction one and this one, like it's all like in one harness. Oh man, this thing had like serious disaster. But what I could tell you that is that we have another clue here. This looks, this is the discharge. Right, it's the discharge. And what does that mean? We're running hot. All right, guys, so we're pretty much freed up for the most part. It's got to take off this heater, but looks like we're good to reduce any carbon buildup. Of course, we braze with nitro, but I'm just going to cut these out and let's test this oil inside this compressor. See what's going on here. We have any clues. As far as that thermistor, look at this little black stain. That's the thing literally melted on here. Unreal. Sand down the connections so we don't get anything in the pipe and then cut it out. Cut this thing out. All right, we got the pipes cut. Let's go ahead and remove this. Get the compressor out the way. Let's check this oil. All right, guys, let's pull this thing out. Hopefully nothing gets caught here. This thing is heavy. All right. Cool. All right, guys, so we got these two glass bottles. Once again, here's the kit we're using. And let's see, let's see what it says. So the instructions, pour the contents of the small bottle into the large bottle and the bottom layer of mixture should be purple, very much like the color on this box. So put a small one into the big one and we should get a color change. Then we're gonna mix, excuse me, then we're gonna fill the small bottle with the oil. We're gonna dump the compressor oil into that small bottle. Then we're gonna pour that small bottle of oil into the large bottle then we're going to cap it and shake it well then we're going to have to give it two to three minutes and it says there's going to be a separation between the two and it says if the bottom layer fades or loses its color entirely the sample has an unacceptable acid number so it looks like it should stay the same color now let's start this all right we're going to pour the small bottle into this one Okay, we do have a color color change, just like over here. Then it says, fill the small bottle completely with the oil being tested. All right, Chris, we're gonna lean this and we're gonna try to get oil out of this. All right. So let's just try to lean it. 
And, a little, and let's bring this a little bit towards where the plastic is here. Kind of messy, but it's coming out. Okay. There's the oil, right? And it says, fill it, pour it into here. Okay, we did that. It says cap it. Shake well. Man, that's kind of cool. All right, shake it well. And then we gotta give this two to three minutes. Chris, start a timer on your phone. All right, let's give this thing some time. All right, so I'm gonna give this thing a chance and this thing is supposed to separate. I can see like the pink layer is getting smaller and smaller. Let's just give it some time and see what happens. So it's just after three minutes, excuse the noise. We're in the elevator machine room. So you can see it's like purple, separated purple. So it said if we lost the color on the bottom, then it has an unacceptable acid number. This thing has a very, very bright purple color, just like the box. It hasn't lost anything and it hasn't cleared out. So it looks like, it looks like we're good here. I'm gonna give this compressor oil a check. Same thing for the refrigerant. So we gotta pass on that side. Luckily, we don't have to do any remedies for that. Looks like they got other issues here, but this is definitely a test worth taking. All right, since we're all good on that side, we went ahead and changed that compressor. It might be raining overnight. It's been like on and off rain. Never know with this stuff, so. What I did was, I got this thing in a vacuum right now. See the gauges right here. So I tie wrap this umbrella <laughs> onto here so it will protect us for the rain. And we're gonna leave a vacuum overnight. We're gonna be back in the morning. We're gonna go ahead and see, we're gonna close the vacuum, close the manifold, see if that holds. See what kind of micron reading we're getting. I got a micron gauge on there right now. And in the morning, we're gonna come back and change all those boards while we wait to see if that vacuum holds we're gonna change all those boards and just continue along here this is a big job it's a pain in the butt but it is what it is if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time